Rick Tyler, national spokesman for Ted Cruz's campaign. Thank you so much, Rick, for joining us. Glad to be here. Good morning. Let's talk about the math here and going back to Senator Cruz. I'm sure you've heard now over and over his reply to Chuck Todd's question whether or not he will win Texas. And he didn't seem very confident. As a fellow Texan, that was a shocker for many reasons because every Texan has a little swagger in that state. And he's not confident about his own home state. What does that tell you? Oh, I heard that. I heard that too. And I don't think it was expressing confidence. I think it was expressing a little humility. Senator Cruz has around say, run around saying, you know, we're going to win, we're going to win, and we're going to win everything. And so, um, you know, it's an expectations game. Uh, I think we'll do well in all the March 1st states because uh, they're southern states. They share the same values as as Senator Cruz. People are getting hammered uh, economically, and they're looking for someone who's going to rein in the federal government, cut taxes, get government off people's back, create jobs, and get them back to work. That's what Senator Cruz has been campaigning on, and so that's what we're going to—that's what we're fighting for. Okay, Rick, I'll take you at your word that that was humility uh, expressed by Senator Cruz. So I'll ask you because you can speak in a different way, perhaps, than he can. Will Ted Cruz win Texas? Look, we've got 27,000 volunteers in Texas. It, it is his home state. Uh, we're not taking it for granted. We're working very hard. Uh, but look, I've, I've given up predicting anything in this race. It's, uh, it's been uh, <laughs> different every single day. We've done very well. We won Iowa. Uh, these southern states have an evangelical base like Iowa does. Uh, when we worked really hard in, in Iowa, we, we turned them out. We've been working hard in the March 1st states, particularly in the south. And so we'll turn them out. So you've got Oklahoma, Tennessee, uh, Arkansas. Um, Alabama, uh, Georgia, these, these are all good states for Ted Cruz, and we hope to do well that day. Uh, I noticed that Marco Rubio said that he doesn't plan to win until March 15th, but unfortunately, with that plan, 45% of the delegates will already be allocated, and if you include March 15th, which is Florida, his home state, 61% of the delegates will be allocated. So I think uh, we've got a lot that we can work for and, and win, And uh, but Marco Rubio, who, who does sound to me like he's running for vice president because he won't take on the, the front runner, we have taken on the front runner, and we've beaten the front runner. So, Ted Cruz is the only person who can beat Donald Trump. I know the conservatives are coalescing behind him, and uh, we're excited to go forward. Well, Rick, I know you've just made the point, and I think you said the word evangelical three times in that answer, but the evangelical vote went to Donald Trump in the state where I am right now, South Carolina, where you guys campaigned hard for them. Has this label of liar and dirty politics now stuck to Ted Cruz? Well, what I'd like to see is uh, the, the media push back on Donald Trump when he says Ted Cruz is lying, or for that matter, when, when Marco Rubio said that Ted Cruz is lying, what is he lying about? Is he lying about his past support for partial birth abortion in, in Trump's case? Uh, no, he had past support. He's recently supported Planned Parenthood. We're not lying about that either. In fact, he said he'd supported Planned Parenthood on the debate stage uh, most recently. Uh, he supported TARP. He supported bailouts. He supported eminent domain for private gain. Uh, all these things are true. He can call people liars. He can run away from his record. Marco Rubio does, does similar. He, he has voted eight, so he's missed 18 votes on national defense authorization and that's his record if he wants to refute his record refute his record he has he's pro amnesty refute your record but don't just run around calling people liars I think people can see through that I, I, I think it's but, but, you know it's not a good sign but, but it, it appears yeah, I'm sorry. if people can see through it why didn't they see through it here in South Carolina I know it's one thing to push back on the media and say well we're not asking that question and we are and we have and 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 your candidate Senator Cruz held a huge news conference challenging Donald Trump in front of a crowd of people in South Carolina. With all of those things said, why did he lose the evangelical vote? Is this no longer an ideological race? Well, first of all, Senator Cruz's appeal is broader than the evangelical base, but he's done very well in the evangelical base. We, we lost it narrowly to Donald Trump. Uh, but the evangelical base is not a monolith. They, 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 care more about, they care about the social issues, abortion, life, marriage, uh, but they also care about jobs and economy. And so we've been talking about jobs and economy because our, our flat tax plan, 10%, grows the economy, creates 5 million new jobs, uh, has the lowest uh, deficit uh, spending than all the plans. But Donald Trump blows the deficit out of the water. Uh, Marco Rubio's plan is more of the same. So look, you got someone who wants to make deals, someone's already making deals, and someone who, like Ted Cruz, has stood up to the Washington establishment and won't make deals. So that's the clear choice. Uh, there's one conservative yeah. left in the race, and someone who will create jobs the economic pro-growth plans like Ronald Reagan, and that's, that's Senator Ted Cruz. Nobody else is like it.
And I get that, but, but I know that you, and, and I'm not quite clear on, on your answer, because obviously in Iowa, Ted Cruz focused heavily on the evangelical vote. He did the same thing here in South right. Carolina. They're not a monolith, to your point, but it is the base of his support, at least what he was banking on. So looking ahead to Super Tuesday, if Donald Trump beats Ted Cruz with evangelical voters in most of those big states um, where you have a, a huge number of delegates, is it over for him? If you can't win your base, if your team leaves you for a guy who does not align with their values, is it over for you? Well, look, we're going to work very hard to continue to win the evangelical base, not only in the life issue uh, against Planned Parenthood uh, for pro-marriage. We've done all those things. We'll continue to communicate that to the evangelical community, and we'll also continue to talk about uh, pro-jobs. Are, they are an important base, and you bring up a good point. We're going to work hard to win them over and show that uh, Ted Cruz uh, has uh, the fruits. He has the deeds. Uh, uh, Donald Trump doesn't, so we're going to make that comparison. Yeah. All right, Rick, thank you so much for joining me. Greatly appreciate, no, appreciate it. it, and we wish your campaign the best.